isolation level okay so as name suggest isolation is isolation of two transactions okay so let's say I have two transaction this is t1 so as name suggest isolation means how two transactions t1 and t2 are isolated from each other okay so when we have studied acid property okay this i stands for this isolation right okay and it means that how two transactions are isolated to each other okay so the idea is to have transactions isolated to each other right and for that we have various isolation level defined in sql okay and related to each isolation level we also have some violations like which iso isolation le level is strict and which one has some violations allowed okay so let's learn it so before we list isolation level and violations allowed let's understand what are violations okay so what are basically violations first one which we will be considering here is dirty read now second one is non-repeatable read and the third one is phantom okay so we have understood all of this in previous chapter but let's quickly revise it what is dirty read so if an item is read before it has been committed so let's say a transaction t1 writes an item a okay and transaction t2 reads it quickly after this write okay so in that case this item is not yet committed and transaction t2 reads it okay so if this transaction fails this data which has been read completely becomes irrelevant okay so it means that this is a dirty read okay whenever you are reading something which is not committed this then it is dirty read now let's focus what is non repeatable read so let's say i have this table okay and in in table we have data item this is data item a okay now let's say this transaction t1 reads the value of this okay read a okay and it gets that this is 10 right now another transaction t2 t2 modifies this data item and it modifies it as writes a as let's say 20 okay so now this becomes 20 now when this transaction t t1 this again reads the item okay then initially it was 10 but now it finds it as 20 right 20 so you can see that between like this is reading the data item a and it is getting 20 so you can find that between these two reads by transaction t1 another transaction t2 modified the data and when the second transaction i mean the transaction t1 is reading the data again then it finds that the value has been changed okay so in that manner this repeated read is causing a problem right we cannot repeat the read right due to this intervention of transaction t2 okay so this is the problem and this is called non repeatable read another one is phantom phenomena phantom phenomena is that let's say in a database table now you have various rows right various rows a transaction t1 performs a query let's say this is q1 okay performs a query and then he founds two rows are relevant over certain condition let's say i'll write c okay so this transaction t1 performs a query over condition c and retrieves two rows these two rows right now a transaction t2 performs a update query let's say this is i will write as q u over the same condition c 
okay then what will happen he inserts another row in between okay another row is inserted by this transaction and now if the same query is again performed then another new row is found so what i'm saying is initially transaction t1 performs a query over condition c on this table okay and he this query this transaction finds two rows relevant and it is retrieved okay two rows are returned for this query now transaction t2 in between performs update query and inserts another row okay over the same c condition okay now if this query is run again what will happen this will retrieve another row this extra row will be retrieved right so this extra row is, appears like a phantom okay because for the same query it was not there now suddenly it has appeared from nowhere so for the same query as it is retrieving another extra row that is called phantom row and this phenomena is called phantom phenomena okay so these are the violations now let's see for which isolation level which violations are allowed now you can see that these are the isolation levels this is read uncommitted read committed it is clear from the name that is this isolation level allows read uncommitted value okay uncommitted data this doesn't allow uncommitted data okay to be read it allows only committed data to be read this is repeatable read okay so repeatable read we have just seen that what is a repeatable read okay we have seen non repeatable read so this is opposite of it and then this is serializable okay so serializable we have studied a lot till now now let's see this dirty read whether it is allowed in read uncommitted or not so of course when you read uncommitted data it is dirty read right so it allows dirty read this isolation level it also allows non repeatable read okay and it also allows phantom phenomena when you read committed of course dirty read will not be there and now this read committed isolation level doesn't allow dirty read but this non repeatable read may happen in this isolation level and of course phantom phenomena is also likely to happen now next one is repeatable read so when you have repeatable read of course this non repeatable read problem will not be there and this dirty read will not be there okay so only thing remaining is phantom phenomena here and for serializable all are taken care none of the violation is allowed okay so generally that's why scheduler enforces serializable isolation level okay so that everything will be correct so now in next chapter we will learn how we can enforce serializable how scheduler enforces serializable okay because if you want to enforce serializability you have to have some mechanism so that the same data is not being used uh, let's say a data item a if a data item a is let's say being read by something then somebody doesn't write it if it has next read or let's say uh, when some write is being performed another one is not allowed to write okay so any kind of uh, action which can cause a problem should be avoided okay so that can be done when you lock this data item right whenever some transaction start performing an action over this data item right you lock it you lock it for other transactions now this lock can be of different type which we will learn but the first thing is that you ensure that now this data item is locked and you cannot other transaction cannot use it until this transaction allows okay or this transaction is finished so all these things we will learn in next chapter where we will learn concurrency control techniques okay and we shall say like concurrency control technique